Hello again, and welcome to another one of my Rewriting Who history videos, where this time I give you my version of The Day of the Doctor. Now this episode will continue from my John Her Only special with the moment asking the Ninth Doctor, is he afraid of the big bad wolf? This conversation would continue as it does in the actual episode, only ending when the moment offers the Ninth Doctor a chance to see what lies ahead by opening portals into his future. Naturally, this all depends if Christopher Eccleston could have been brought back for the special, but even if he couldn't, the role of the Tenth Doctor could be reduced to using stock footage, body doubles, and utilising his returning companions. This version of the Tenth Doctor would be from a time set between Boomtown and Bad Wolf, which means his companions would have been Rose and Jack. As the Tenth Doctor's TARDIS enters the Time Vortex, it is abducted by the Cybermen. But for what purpose? Well, the Cybermen have upgraded their hardware so they can now integrate themselves with a Time Lord. And seeing as how their whole shtick is removing feelings, which Doctor would benefit the most from this operation? The Doctor living with the most regret. We then cut to a recreation to the end of the Doctor's Daughter, where the 11th Doctor and Donna say goodbye to Martha. As they walk away, the 11th Doctor doubles over in agony. So both Martha and Donna help the 11th Doctor back to his TARDIS. We then cut to the 12th Doctor, also portrayed by David Tennant. If you're confused, see my number in the Doctor's video. This version of the Doctor is from between Journey's End and the next Doctor. He too also feels the effects of the removal of a past life and begins trying to find a solution to his problem. Finally, we get the 13th Doctor, only he's from a point in his time stream where his companions are Amy and Rory, not Clara. The reason being, if the 9th Doctor who is watching this sees Clara, he would be suspicious about who she actually is. Anyway, on with the plot. The 11th, 12th and 13th Doctors contact each other, realise there's two tenants and talk through how that's possible. They believe the 10th Doctor is in trouble as no other previous Doctors have answered their distress call, but just to be sure, they regress back through their past lives and determine which incarnation is in danger. And just as they suspected, it's the 10th Doctor. They set their coordinates to where the 10th Doctor is and they begin to land in the Cyberbase besides the 10th Doctor's TARDIS. But the Cybermen are smart and they've put a time distortion around their base so that no other Doctor can intervene in their plan. This causes each TARDIS to land a certain distance away from the Cyberbase so the Doctors must make their way there on foot. Each Doctor orders his companions to stay behind for their own safety. Back at the Cyber Base, the Cybermen continue to wear down the 10th Doctor and he begins to believe he'd be better off without his emotions. Finally, the three Doctors meet each other as they reach the Cyber Base. They easily defeat the Legion of Cybermen that are protecting the perimeter of the Cyber Base. Meanwhile, the Cybermen have finally worn down the 10th Doctor. He accepts their offer and leaves Rose and Jack in the TARDIS. The three Doctors destroy the Time Distorter as the Cybermen begin converting the 10th Doctor. The three Doctors burst in and try to convince the 10th Doctor not to complete the conversion, but he isn't listening to their pleas. So they show him all the people they have saved since the Time War by using the contact method which was first seen in the three Doctors. The 10th Doctor begins to fight against the Cyber Programming, but as he's still connected to the mainframe, this causes other Cybermen's heads to explode. The 10th Doctor breaks free and the Doctors escape in his TARDIS shortly before the Cyber Ship explodes. The 10th Doctor's TARDIS lands by the other three and everyone exits. This is where each Doctor and his companions say their goodbyes before returning to their proper times. But before we see them leave, we cut back to Gallifrey and the Ninth Doctor finishes watching his future 
but he hasn't changed his mind as he realizes in order for his future selves to have those adventures where they saved all the people in the contact flashback the timeline must remain the same the ninth doctor enters his tardis and contacts the war room he tells them that the war must end and they plead with the ninth doctor not to use the moment Suddenly, they're interrupted by the 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th Doctors. The 9th Doctor asks them how is that possible, and the other Doctors tell him they were let through by the moment. We then cut back to the scene where all the Doctors are saying goodbye to each other, when the moment suddenly takes control of Rose's body and gives them the opportunity to save Gallifrey. The 9th Doctor then notices the moment is in his TARDIS, but he says it's too late as he's already set the timer on the moment. But she assures him it's already been taken care of. We cut back to the barn and a sonic screwdriver is pointed at the moment and the detonation sequence is reversed. And that sonic screwdriver belongs to the next Doctor. Back in the ninth Doctor's TARDIS, the moment tells him they only have a few minutes to save Gallifrey and once that time passes, whatever happens will become a fixed point. The other doctors explain that by using technology previously used by Davros and combining it with the TARDIS, they can move Gallifrey and place it at a different point in time and space. This would cause the Daleks surrounding the planet to be destroyed in their own crossfire. But because the future doctors know the Daleks will survive and rebuild their armies, they're going to have to put Gallifrey one second out of sync with the rest of the universe until it's safe to bring them back. The doctors ask if they have permission to try to save Gallifrey, but the general is hesitant. That is until a message is received stating the Dalek Emperor has taken control of the cruciform. Now this message could possibly be a voice over by Derek Jacobi indicating it was the master who sent the message and that would tie in with what happens later on. The general then questions if the doctors can save Gallifrey, and that's when the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth doctors arrive. The Daleks panic from seeing 13 versions of the TARDIS and increase their firepower. Fearing the Daleks will destroy Gallifrey, the general gives the doctors permission to try their plan. The doctors put in the final calculations into their consoles, which we see them doing via stock footage. Each TARDIS begins circling the planet over and over again until enough power is built up. Gallifrey then disappears and the Daleks accidentally destroy themselves. We then cut to inside the Ninth Doctor's TARDIS where he is laying unconscious on the floor. His eyes open and he looks around, slightly confused by what's happened. He sees the moment and asks her if Gallifrey was saved and she says it was. He then asks about his other selves and she replies, as soon as Gallifrey was saved, they were all returned to their proper times. This is when the Ninth Doctor realises he won't remember saving Gallifrey, but the moment assures him, one day he shall remember. One day. The Ninth Doctor then begins to regenerate and the moment disappears. As soon as the Ninth Doctor becomes the Tenth Doctor, he immediately forgets about saving Gallifrey. This is so the events of series 1 to 7 will remain intact. And the episode ends with the 10th Doctor setting the coordinates on the console and heading off into his next adventure.